you're with me, right? Some people know about it, some people don't. It's like, it's just like a weird thing. So recently, I've been having, well, it started a couple of years ago, where in my meditations, I would see the earth from above. And far, far away in the distance, I would see this red-headed angel. Waving a blanket. And every time it would wave the blanket, I could see like negative energy coming up out of the earth into the blanket and dispersing into the cosmos. And I was like, hey, you want me to hold the other end? <laughs> you know, I don't be doing shit. I'm always like, hey, hi. He's like, yeah, go ahead. And we did that for a while and then I like snapped out of the meditation. It was years ago, I think two or three years ago. And the other day I was meditating. I didn't mean to. The thing is I don't mean to meditate ever. I fall asleep in the tub. I sleep in the tub. I know you're not supposed to, you can draw them out. I know, I know. from God to the people who give to God. He is the protector of those who choose to give to God instead of taking from God. And I thought, well, that sounds right. <laughs> and the way I met him, or it, with the blanket, that sounds all right. And since then, I've noticed a profound change in my life. It's not that the blue guy isn't there. But I think that was what I needed when my life wasn't really secure here. I've almost died many, many, many times. Most of you are 12 counselors, so you've probably had the same experience. We're constantly at the brink of death. But I don't feel that way anymore. I don't need that anymore. Now, if you're in a room of I'm not afraid of you killing me, but you should be really afraid I might kill you. Something is happening. I feel, I feel the righteousness of God protecting me. Um, what religion do you follow? I'm Muslim. And I can't begin to explain it. I know that nothing can harm it. The, the feeling I feel, it's this thing, guardian angel, that people talk about, I think it's 
something you're awarded at some time in your life. I don't think this is something you have. I think at some point in your life, it's like you're gifted it. Because that's what happened to me. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, this is, and then, this is a bitch on fucking YouTube, right? A bitch just got in my head. She was like, oh, you know, guardian angels are real. And what you should do is you should ask for a sign. You should be like, and guardian angel, give me a gift. And I was like, that sounds really fucked up. Like, why? Like, you don't even know the dude. You're already asking for presents. Like, at least, like, you didn't know they were dead. That's how you get ghosts, right? People just don't know they're dead. And I'm like the type of person, like I'm very straightforward. You know, I'm sorry, but you gotta go, bye. You got everything okay? How about before, okay, okay, you know what? Let's do this. Let's take one question, something deep, and then we'll go small. Go, you. So glad you asked that because until I was like 12 or 13, I thought God was the Burger King guy with the crown. <laughs> I swear to God, there's a Burger King across the street. What do you want? I swear to God, I was like, oh, okay, got you. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's cool, whatever, I don't care. I'm down. Um, but then I, I, I really ran away from my religion because 
my mom tried to shove it down my throat. And the thing with Aries is that it's not that I don't like you guys. I love you guys. Um, I just, I am a military brat. And the thing about military brats, and I'm, both my parents are military. The thing about military brats that we're known for is that we don't like to be told what to do. Because our fucking parents are fucking officers. My, my mom, they were both officers. They weren't just in the military. So this is, the whole job is telling people what to do. My mom's a captain. So military brats are people who grew up around adults who just shout orders at you all the time. We have a chip in our shoulder. You tell us what to do, we're gonna go fucking crazy. <laughs> Cause fuck you. You know? Why are you always telling me what to do? Get off my fucking back. With the pray, 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 you gotta pray, you gotta pray, you gotta pray. I was like, fuck this, fuck you, fuck this religion. I'm out, I can't do this. Like you're just trying to fucking control me. And then I went out in the world and every time I fell down, God picked me up. Every time. Every time, someone would just show up out of nowhere with the same face. Over and over again with the same face. I'm like, you know who you would look like? They're like, yeah, I know. Like, huh? And I started to realize, like, it doesn't matter if you believe in God. God says in the Quran that I love you 40,000 times more than your mother. I adore you. Your kid does something wrong, you're like, okay, whatever. Yo, Bob would be doing shit wrong, you'd be like, you will not believe what happened. I broke the iPad. I'm like, break 10 more. What the fuck do I care? You're my child. Who cares? That's how God loves you. And I'm just his mom. So when you think about God, when I think of it, I don't think of a thing. You know, Hasim talks about how in the Bible at the beginning, it says that it's the tetragrammaton, the name for God, and tetragrammaton and God can be interchanged. That's a shape. That's technology. That's a black hole contained. Right? So God can be any of those things. In St. John the Divine, they got chapels for geometry, math, science. That's all God too. Math is God. Right? So, for me, what I started seeing, and I've never shared this before, when I really needed God, I would see myself in this like open area, and if any of you are Muslim, you're gonna be like, oh shit, with this like mosque in the background with a green dome, and I'm sitting on the ground next to, I don't know if you guys have this in the countries you're from, but like in India, Pakistan, we have these like benches that are made out of reeds, like wooden benches that people sit on. They have like straw and rope and you sit on them. And I'm sitting on the ground and I've had my head leaned against one of them, of the post of one of them. And I just know that behind me right here, I just know, I just know is the prophet who's being honored with my religion. I know he's sitting there. That's what I see when I think of God. I don't see God. I just see the person that God chose for people like me. I don't think Islam is better than anything else. I think that religions are here because each religion calls to a different type of person. The reason so many people convert in, in, in prison is because Islam is for sinners. Islam is for bad people who want to be good, killers, sinners. I told you, that's what they see out there. That's the penitentiary crowd, that's killers. You know what they see when they see us? The two of us? Killers. The song is for people like us. We're bad people. The song is like, listen, I will hurt you, stop. These are my kids, be nice to my kids. That's what I see, that's what I feel. I'm only here to fulfill a bet. God and the devil, they're friends. They're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> they had a fight. The fight went too far. 
dude rose up and was like, ah, ah, ah. And God was like, fuck out of here, get out. But that's his best friend, seated at the right hand of God since, he, since the beginning of time. That's the morning star. That's his man's. They had a fight. And dude was like, okay, you know what? You love these stupid, ugly monkeys more than me. I've been here forever. Nobody loves you more than me. His love made him arrogant. Right? He's like, bet, I'm going to show you. You love these things more than me, right? They're better than me? And God's like, I didn't say they were better than you. You taking this personal? What the fuck is wrong with you? You know, he's like, oh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Watch. I'm going to show you the worst parts of the nature of these things. Watch. So they have a bet going. Are we fuck-ups? Are we worth the effort? Is the juice worth the squeeze or no? The devil says no. God says yes. So what's hanging in the balance of my life? I'm not embarrassing my creator. Temptation? God forgive me. Maybe there are things that could tempt me. You could probably intimidate me with certain shit. But tempt me? No. I know what I want. If I want it, I'll go get it. I don't need you to give it to me. I know how to get shit for myself. Tell me with what? Money, I got it. Sex, I got it. Drugs, I got it. Kids, I don't want no more. <laughs> Friends, I got them. What are you gonna tell me with? Fame, I don't want it. I'm gonna just end up on World Star all the time beating the shit out of people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What are you gonna tell me with? You think you're gonna win this bet? Not on my watch, not around me or not. You're gonna take this bullshit somewhere else. That's how I conceptualize God. Someone who put its faith in me. And it's like, don't embarrass me. All right, I got you. I'm not gonna embarrass you. You know what, how about, how about I make you look good? How about instead of embarrassing you, I'm the model child. How about that? How about I'll do everything wrong so everyone out there who's lost and doing everything wrong can come to me so I can introduce them to you? How about that? And God's like, all right, let it rock. Go, do it. And I'm like, I'm gonna have to beat some people up and do some drugs and fuck some dudes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, and God's like, let it rock. You know? <laughs> He said it outside, he was like, this is a witch convention. I said, no, it's called a coven. <laughs> <laughs> like-minded people with like-minded energy. We just, what's the thing that we all have in common? We just want to be better versions of ourselves. That's the only thing we really have in common. We don't really have a lot in common. We like to look cute. I will say that, Red Pam is cute. <laughs> you know about the makeup and the style and that we're very current, <laughs> you know? But other than that, we don't have a lot in common except that we just want to be better, we want to be smarter, good people, be more connected to God. That's why I like your question. It's so real. Like, what's God? I don't know. I took my kid out to the beach when he was four years old, three years old. And he asked me, we were living on the beach in Denmark, right on the water. And he said, Mommy, everyone keeps saying this word, God, God. Who's God? And I was like, look. And he was like, what? I was like, right here, look at this. <laughs> he was like, the sky? And I was like, yeah, the sky, the water, the clouds. And he was like, okay. I was like, this is God. And he was like, oh, so everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, okay, let it rock. <laughs> mashallah, you've never met a luckier kid. You know what he told me the other day? 15 now, mashallah. He goes, so um, this whole thing is a placebo effect, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what, you little Capricorn moon, what'd you say? <laughs> he said, this whole thing, this simulation, this whole thing is a placebo effect, right? I had to think about it for a second. I don't ever have to do that. 
Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I was like, wait. <laughs> he was like, uh huh. <laughs> He's right. Whatever you think it is, it is. Whatever you think it isn't, it, it'll be more. That's what he's trying to say. Mm -hmm. That's how placebos work. So that's why you have to, well, he would say embrace it. I would say find the very straight and very narrow compromise on nothing. <laughs> Yo, compromise on nothing. Yo, I'll tell you straight, if you want me to be a bad person, you need to get up from around me because I might physically hurt you. Because you're insulting me by being in my fucking presence and even suggesting some ill shit to me. How did you even think to talk to me about that? I had a bitch once when I first started the channel, you know what the fuck she said to me? She goes, I got like nine kids or something and I have cancer, can you put it on my youngest daughter? What? And I was like, I was like, you're so lucky I don't fucking kill you <laughs> from here. Like, she's probably dead. She's already put cancer on all nine of her children. You know, <laughs> like, bitch, they're already diseased. No. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, on that note, let's go small. <laughs> let's take a break. I don't know how much time we have. I don't know what the time is. Hi! Hello! I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's go outside and talk. What's the time of